Hi folks, this is Al with BombBills.com here with an instructional video for the BDT, the Bolt Together Drift Trike that you put together yourself. This video is just one in a series of instructional videos intended to be used in combination with the Drift Trike build plans available through BombBills.com and on eBay, username Auto Beverage. Beware of imitations, buy only from the inventor. That's me. This particular video will cover drawing 300 which is the main assembly now if you're watching this video you would have put together all the other sub assemblies and you're ready to put the trike together in its final form we're already in the workshop so let's get started let's quickly take a look at our clean work area for step four we have the trike completed through step three we have our hardware our components our tools and our drawing. In this case our drawing is 300 sheet number 4. Bill of material consists of just three simple parts and it's pretty self-explanatory. For tools we just have a 532nd Allen key and for components we have our logo plate, our clip-on barrel nuts and our quarter inch fasteners. We're going to take item 1 which is our logo cover in this case, I painted mine orange to match uh, the wheels. Uh, this is a powder coat that I did. But of course, again, your paint scheme, you do what you wish. I glued a white piece of plastic on the inside just so when you look through, you don't see through the logo cutout. Now, it'd really be cool if you were to put a clear or an opaque lens here and maybe an LED behind it. Uh, ideas like that, that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it your trike. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our clip-on barrel nuts and we're simply going to slide them just in place like that. Just goes right in like that. And then the fat part of the barrel will go on the inside. I'll snap the other one on and we'll pop it into place. With the clip on nuts in place, we're simply going to pop this right in. We're going to move the cable out of the way here. Line it up just like that. And push her straight in. Then we'll fasten our quarter 20 screws in the back and that'll do it. And there's what it looks like with the logo plate installed. Got our screws in the back. Not too bad. Screws in the back. Let's move on to step five. Here's our clean work area for step number five. You see we have the drift trike itself completed through step four we have our parts laid out drawings and tools and the tools needed for this assembly are a 532nd and a 1 8 allen key a 1 half inch socket and wrench with an extension and a ratchet we're going to start out step five by installing the engine uh, looking at the assembly notes now one thing we want to note we want to stack three washers on top of each other to create a space here and what we're doing is we're creating a space between the bottom side of the engine and the uh, top of these button head screws because the uh, the engine otherwise would would drag along them so we don't want that we just want to elevate a little bit so what I've done is I've I've actually taken some super glue and just glued three together that way I don't have to fight with them when when I set them here to thread the uh, hardware through so with these setting in place I'm simply going to lift the engine uh, set it over top and then get my bolt started. Okay, switching to the handheld now to show you a little bit more about the engine mounting. We uh, installed our hardware, items 6, 7, and 8 to 5 16 bolts, nuts, and washers. Um, we have the hardware with the bolt head on the underside. Notice we have a washer on the underside. We have our three spacer washers and we have a washer on the top side then a nut. And we just have that loose right now because we're going to end up sliding that forward. Now here's why we needed the washers. If you look straight down there, we had to provide head clearance right here between the bottom of the engine and the top of these button heads because later on we're going to push that engine forward to tighten the chain. So our next step is to install the clutch. And here is our clutch which is item four on your drawing. Now this clutch has a built-in key. There's no loose key to fiddle with. See it down there? It's kind of machined right into this. And there's only one set screw. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take our clutch, put it over our engine shaft, line up our set screw, of course, or our uh, keyway, of course, and just slide it into place. So just kind of rotate that till you get it right. And then go ahead and push it all the way back. And then we're going to take our Allen key and we're going to reach down in there and we're going to tighten that set screw. Okay, we're back. And you see we have our sprocket mounted to the shaft. Now it will rotate freely, a uh, clutch rather, I'm sorry. The clutch is mounted to the shaft. The set screw is tightened with our 1 8 Allen key. But this will rotate freely with the shaft because it is a clutch. When your engine spins up, there's essentially clutch pads or brake pads in there that will fly out with a centripetal force and lock these two together and then drive your chain. So for now, it should be spinning freely. So recall from step one where we left this position loose. And the reason for that is now we want to line up the chain and sprocket. So if I look at this directly from the back, which is not the cam camera angle you have, but you'll be able to stand directly behind it. You want these two teeth, these two sprockets, to line up perfectly before locking down these set screws. And the easiest way to do that is to take a straight edge. In this case, I just have a little speed square, a little framing square. And I'm going to go from the outside surface of this sprocket to the outside surface of this sprocket. Now note, I'm, I'm being careful not to be on the hub because that's a different surface. It's, it's jutted out a little bit. We want to be right here on this flat surface of the sprocket. So I'm going to take these two and I'm just going to move this lower sprocket until they come into alignment. Just like that. And if you have a friend to help out, that's fine too. But once these are in position, you're simply going to take your 532nd Allen key and you're going to lock down your sprocket hub and the two shaft collars on both sides of it. So I'm going to do that now and we'll be back. Our sprocket is locked into place and the two shaft collars on either side of it are locked into place. There's one set collar for the shaft, one set screw for the shaft collars, two for the hubs. <clears throat> now you can back these out, put a little bit of blue Loctite on those set screws. You probably should run them in tight. They need to be very tight and in the end your uh, sprockets should line up and if you take your straight edge back to it you can confirm it after tightening down and we're right on the money there. So we're going to move on. The next step is going to be to um, identify the length of chain we need. So first thing you need to do is make sure the engine is all the way back in its slot. So these four bolts that mount the engine they should be a little bit loose. Slide that all the way back in its slot. So we're going to wrap that chain around there and mark it and cut it at this length. And the reason for that is when we go to tighten the chain, now we have our full range in the slots to slide the engine forward. And as the engine comes forward, this point will move forward and then the chain will get tighter. So. I'm zoomed in here to the top sprocket. The chain is wrapped around the bottom sprocket. Now when you do that, make sure that it's not skipping a tooth. Make sure that every link of the chain is fully engaged in a tooth, otherwise it'll be artificially too short or too long. So with it wrapped tight around the bottom, so we have it up on the one side here where my thumb is. So that's the one end. The other end is, is wrapping around here, see? Okay, now you want this to be as tight as you can on this side. Uh, because that's you want to make the chain as short as you can uh, because then you will you will have less distance to slide the engine to tighten the chain if you understand what I'm saying now to cut the chain you have to be careful where you cut it you have to cut it such that you're left with an inside link see this is an inside plate see this plates on the outside this plates on the inside here, this plate is on the outside, and the plate underneath it, where I'm going to join them together, is on the inside. So I need an inside plate there. So I'm going to actually pop this pin out. That's what I'm going to do. And then my master link will go right through those two holes. So in order to do that, 
The best way to mark that is to take some sort of a paint pen or a Sharpie or whatever and just mark that right there so you don't lose it. Now we're going to take it off and break the chain at that, at that particular point. And I'll show you that now. Okay, we pulled the chain off the sprocket. Here's our mark, our little paint mark right here. So that's the pin we want to move out of there. Now the best way to do it is with a chain breaking tool. Um, and you'll see a part number at the bottom of your screen there right now. That's the place where you could buy this tool. Um, if you don't have it, you can still break the chain. What you have to do is grind the head off this pin. And you can do that with a uh, bench grinder. You can do it with a file, but that's going to take you a while. Or uh, an angle grinder uh, with an abrasive disc on it. You need to grind that, the head of that pin sticking out all the way flush. And then you need to take a punch with, a, with a, an end about the same diameter as the pin and you need to set it up on your on your bench and drive it through. It's, it's a pain but it's uh, it's nothing you wouldn't do if you had a motorcycle uh, or a bicycle but the best way to do it is with this chain breaker tool uh, and it just slips right over the end here and then you just turn the screw and it will drive We'll drive the pin right out for you. Okay, we cut our chain and you can see our two free ends. We wrapped them back around the sprocket. Now it's time to install the master link, which comes in three pieces. The pins, a backing plate, and then a little retaining clip here. So we're just going to slide the, uh, the two pin plate here right through the two open holes and you can see they'll stick out here you'll put your plate over top of that and you'll put your clip on it's like a little hairpin clip now you're going to want to put your the two finger ends this way because when the chain's rotating you want the the rounded edge to be the leading edge in case it catches something and it tends not to rip the clip off it tends to help push it back on so this is pretty easy to install you just slide it over the one pin and you'll see the other pins getting ready to bite just like that and then you'll take your a pair of needle nose pliers and just uh, work it right on just like that and that's it so what we'll do now is we'll slide the engine forward until the chain is tight now you might need help from a friend on this to hold the engine forward while you're tightening your four engine bolts but we'll do that and we'll come right back so we have our engine moved forward and tightened down so we got our chain tight and our next step is we're going to modify or shorten the throttle cable uh, recall we we bought this long um, and remember that it's it's snaked down through your frame and exits through that hole so now it is just uh, hanging out here loose so we need to connect that to the engine so uh, we're going to do that next. So let's take a look in here in our Harbor Freight engine. We have a screw right there that uh, has a clip and that clip will be used to clamp down this cable jacket or sleeve. Now let's take a look around here. This is the pivoting nut for the throttle. So when you get this engine most likely that will be tightened down um, somewhat tight so that when you operate the throttle it sticks in place um, because these engines are not intended really to be used for this they can be but you have to adapt the throttle they're intended to be moved to a throttle position to run like a log splitter and then held there at a certain position so as you move it it'll stay in that position the way to alleviate that is to loosen this nut and then you'll add a small spring if necessary here to pull the throttle back so we're going to cut our sleeve to fit there the sleeve will end just beyond where it clamps and then the rest of the cable will come through and in through this barrel right here so the first thing we're going to do is get the correct length by holding our cable in place so we'll route that in place making sure that we're not rubbing on the axle uh, and we have the shortest but less restrictive route and then we'll hold that right there and mark it with our paint pen 
and then that's where we're going to cut our cable sleeve. So let's determine that length, mark it, and come back. Right there, that's where we're going to make our cut. Now, the problem is we can't just cut all the way through this because our cable's inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to loosen this and pull this back apart and we're going to pull the inner cable, the part that does the work, back through this shiv or this uh, sleeve I should say far enough that we're beyond the cut and then we can make a clean cut through the carcass there through this, uh, the, the sheath and, and without cutting the cable underneath it. So I'm going to loosen this up slide this out of the way and we'll be back. Okay, so we removed the throttle off the handlebar. Uh, just recall your your uh, the video where we did the handlebar assembly. I just took it apart and then pulled the cable out of the sheave. Now, um, the sleeve. If you go back to here, you can measure this distance from the end to your cut. And then come over here and make sure that you have at least that much pulled out. If that's the case, then you can cut cleanly through the cable jacket, which is what we're going to do next. Okay, so we're at the other end again and we have our mark. I'm just going to take a large pair of cutters here and I'm just going to cut right through on this mark. You have to give it a good squeeze. There you go. And you can cut that end cleanly just like that. Now when we go back to the other end, I should be able to fish that wire right back through there and it should come out the other end and there it is. So we'll reassemble the throttle at the handlebar and then we'll do our hookup at the engine. So with the cut end of the cable we threaded it in through here, locked down our screw so we have the cable jacket locked down here and we have the cable itself threaded through this little barrel nut right here and locked down here. And that's it! That's it. Now make sure that your throttle moves freely, of course. You can see it there as I twist the handle. And that's it for the throttle hookup. And this is our clean work area for step number six. We have the drift trike assembled all the way up to step number five and our components laid out. Taking a look at drawing 300, step six. This is the final assembly step. It's sheet number six. Uh, and as always, it has a bill of material, which in this case is just the seat and the hardware. That's all step six really is. It's installing the seat and then making final adjustments to all those adjustable things like the handlebars, the throttle position, and all that good stuff. Now, I want to go over something also very important is that there is a sheet 7 and that is just the uh, main assembly specifications uh, it talks about things like the weight and all the warnings and such and we'll go over that uh, in a little bit so we're going to get started by just installing the seat which you see here which is item 1 in your uh, bill of material you've got the seat spacers seat spacer tubes which is item two uh, those would come with your kit as well and we just have some half inch washers and nuts now the tools that you'll need for this are a Phillips screwdriver if you need to rotate and adjust the throttle a five millimeter and six millimeter allen key to rotate and adjust the brake lever and the uh, steering wheel the steering stem height and rotation uh, 9 16 wrench to loosen the two nuts on the U-bolt that hold the foot rest in place in case you want to rotate the foot rest around to better fit. You'll need a 3 quarter inch socket, ratchet, and a short extension. And the extension is to get up through this tube. So on the underside of here there's going to be a hole big enough for your socket to go through and your nuts and washers to go through. And of course you can see that in the exploded view. You're going to come right up through the bottom. So pick a seat location. In my case I'm going to pretty much pick the middle. I'm going to pick these two seat holes. 
So we're going to start out by just putting our spacers right over top of those, just like that. And then the underside of the seat will have two threaded uh, stems sticking down. So I'm going to set that right in place over there. And then we're just going to snake up underneath there our washer and nut and snug them down. And that's all there is to the seat assembly. So let me do that and we'll be back. And the seat is installed. So that's it. You are done with the exception of making your ergonomic adjustments. So now you're going to need some help getting this down off a workbench if you're still on a workbench. So I'm going to ask a friend or neighbor to do that, help me put it on the floor, and we'll make our final adjustments. And with the help of a friend, we got the unit down on the floor. So this is what she looks like when she's done. Of course, yours will be a different color. Uh, could be any color, like we talked about. Flames, team color, military, camouflage, all kinds of good stuff. But this is what she looks like. So the next step is to sit in it, the intended rider sit in it, and make all your adjustments. Now let's recall all the adjustments. We can loosen this screw with the five millimeter to rotate this handle back and forth. We can loosen the throttle with the Phillips screwdriver to rotate this back and forth, remembering to make sure that we have a smooth entrance into our cable uh, passageway here. Okay, now also with the footrest tube, recall the two nuts on the underside, and you can see them there, there, and there. You're going to loosen those so you can rotate the tube. That's another adjustment. And uh, of course, the seat adjustable uh, forward to back. And then the handlebar stem using this six millimeter screw, you can raise the handlebar. And then you're also going to want to align it so the steering wheel is straight when the wheel is straight. And one last final adjustment is this screw right under here. You can just adjust the handlebar rotation. So all those things you're going to want to adjust for your rider and lock them into place. So I've made all my final adjustments in just in time. I'm down to my last piece of bacon. So just for your reference, I rotated this tube forward. It was actually angled back. For taller riders, you're going to want to rotate that tube for, forward. For shorter riders, maybe kids, you want to rotate it back. I also raised my handlebar, set the rotation, and set the rotation of these as well. Again, if you have shorter riders, you can rotate this handlebar around, and then the grips will actually get closer to you. So with that, we are done. Now let's crack a drink to celebrate. Congratulations for finishing, and I appreciate you purchasing the bombbuilds.com build plans for the BDT, the Bolt Together Drift Trike, that you put together yourself. And if you purchased the kit, thank you as well. Now stand by for one more important message. Folks, this final important message, sheet 7 of drawing 300 is the specifications for the drift trike and some important safety warnings. Please read them over. This drift trike will weigh about 165 pounds, pretty manageable. The speed can be up to 32 miles per hour. Now that's going to depend on many factors. That's as fast as it can possibly go, theoretically. It's going to go slower than that, most likely. Um, BombBuilds.com is not responsible for injuries or damages of any type. Now, there's a legal disclaimer that comes with your build plans. Please read it. Also, it's important to wear safety gear, uh, especially for younger riders. Don't operate on public roads. Do not operate under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Operate only on small, smooth roads. And then, finally, 
one last important note. There is no chain guard supplied. Um, you are responsible for guarding the chain to the extent that you feel necessary. You need to guard this chain uh, with a chain guard of your own design. I left it off there because I want you to be responsible for guarding that chain. I want you to use common sense. Let's keep the lawyers out of it, folks. Let's apply common sense instead. I hope you enjoy your drift trike. If you're watching this video and you haven't purchased the plans and you're interested in purchasing the plans, you can go to bombbuilds.com and purchase them there. Or you can go to eBay and look for username Auto Beverage. That's me. Uh, either way, you can purchase the plans there. Thanks again, folks. Take care.